whether you're currently on Windows 11 or you're on Windows 10 and thinking about moving to Windows 11, probably because of that deadline that's coming up, the end of support, you need to check this video out. There are a lot of concerns around Windows 11 and your privacy, whether that's because of AI or all the new advertisements, you name it. There's a ton of new stuff in Windows 11 that turns a lot of people off. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how to make Windows great again with a free application that can take your privacy back. St Windows 11 is a great operating system in a lot of ways. Windows 11 is a terrible operating system in a lot of ways. There's always ugly with the pretty, good with the bad. You kind of got to just work with things in life, right? Nothing's perfect, probably never will be, at least on Earth. Uh, but I'm going to show you today how you can do a lot to improve Windows 11 if you're one of those, which many of us are, that are worried about your privacy and just kind of feel violated by what Microsoft is doing. There's a free application out there. It's called Do Not Spy 11. The name kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> Windows 11 can be a spy if you think about it, right? Especially with, with what they're trying to do with recall now. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, I did a video on recall recently. I'll link that up here for you guys right now. Uh, but this can turn off all the artificial intelligence stuff, all the advertisement stuff. It can really make Windows 11 a desktop operating system again instead of a billboard or whatever you want to call it. Again, I'm not a hater of Windows 11. I actually enjoy Windows 11, but I get a lot of people's complaints about it because it is different. I mean, if you look back, look at Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, eh. But back in the day, it was a desktop OS, and that's what it was made for. Now, it feels more like a phone. You've got advertisements popping up. Things are widgety and fidgety. I mean, you name it. Anyways, we're going to make it great again, and it's only going to take a few clicks. All right, guys, so head on over to this URL. The link is in the description, and there's a free version, and then there's a pro version up to you. The free version is sufficient for what we're doing today, but if you did want the pro version, you can get it for as little as $5. If you enjoy it, maybe consider uh, you know, supporting this guy's efforts or this team's efforts. I'm not sponsored by this in any way. I don't have the pro version today. Um, I'm just using the free version. All right, so once you download that, install it, it's straightforward. Next, next, next. Uh, go ahead and launch it. This is the UI for the application, and it's fairly straightforward. This is the main pane here or the main window and you don't have a lot of options if you had pro you'd be able to save and load a profile and then you do have an action to create a system restore point if you're doing this on a physical machine I would advise you to do this just in case you uh, make a bunch of changes and you don't like them this is probably the easiest way to get back to it you can relaunch the app upon uh, rebooting or whatever you, I would also suggest rebooting after you make these changes by the way but you can just relaunch the app and then it'll show you the changes that have been made. You see here settings that have changed since the last time Do Not Spy 11 was used. And then you can go in there and revert those changes. However, my advice would be to create a system restore point. I'm running a virtual machine today, so I'm just going to take a quick snapshot. VM, and we're going to do a snappy snap. Take a snapshot. We'll just say before Do Not Spy. By the way, guys, if you didn't know, VMware, um, I was just going to say VMware sucks now. <laughs> I, I love VMware. I'm not going to lie. I run VMware at work. I run it at home. But in typical fashion, when Broadcom buys a company, it kind of takes a shit usually. But the product's still solid. And one thing that really, really, really is a plus is that Workstation is now free. So it used to just be player for home users was free. Now, I did a video on it. I'll link that video right now for you guys, a card there at the top. Uh, it's now free. So check that video out. I mean, there's a ton of reasons to go to Workstation versus player. Uh, and the number one reason is now that it's free. All right. So my snapshot is done. If I break anything or I don't like my changes, I can just revert. I probably will revert because this is a demo machine I use for a lot of my videos. But let's just go ahead and turn a bunch of the stuff off. So I'm going to start here with check all. And then let's read over here. Blue is safe to use. Orange, read the description. Red, don't recommend it. 
And then again, gray is the settings that have changed since the last time you used the app. So I'm going to turn this off. Um, actually, I can leave it on. This is a VM. But on my home computer, on my main machine, I should say, I'd leave this one off because obviously I need to have access to the camera. I need to allow things like OBS to access my camera. So that would be, uh, I would leave that one on. But let's just go through this. Um, I don't need any of these advertisements, that's for sure. And these are the application settings. Disable access to account info, to the calendar. And these are for apps, right? So disable access to call history, access to the camera, access to cell data, access to your contacts, access to diagnostic data. Um, you might need this one and this one for functionality. So I'll probably leave those on. Eye tracking, don't need that. Access to the file system, I could see where I would need that. Language list, don't need that. Location info, this one you probably would need on your device, just depending on what you're doing, but I'm on a VM, I don't need that on. Disable access to messaging, I don't need that personally. You might. Uh, access to the microphone, I, I mean, I'm going to uncheck these just because this is something that you guys would probably be going through as an exercise as well. So definitely would need apps to have access to my microphone and camera just for obvious reasons. Uh, don't really need motion activity, that's kind of creepy. Uh, notifications, eh, probably want that on to be honest, right? Access to your pictures, that's questionable, but a lot of things I do, I would like that. Uh, same thing with videos, access to tasks, radios, don't need that. Disable access to downloads folder, definitely need that on because applications will either pull from or push to the downloads folder. Um, obviously, these are all optional for you guys, right? And you can turn them back on. Music library, I don't do much with that. Uh, disable app notification. I mean, that could be very handy, but sometimes I actually need the notifications. That's like, can I just turn off my email at work? That'd be great. Disable application telemetry. This one is probably something that uh, can go both ways because remember, when they're collecting telemetry, they're probably doing something with it, but telemetry can also be very useful. So I'm going to actually leave that off. Uh, disable background applications. These you got to be a little careful with, right? So disable continue experiences. Uh, this tweak disables continue. Oh, okay, cool. So if you click on these, I should have mentioned that before. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you click on these, you'll get a little uh, a little blurb here about what it is. So this tweak disables continue experiences. The Windows device will not be discoverable by other devices and cannot participate in cross device experiences. For me, that's fine. If you guys are doing things with other devices on your LAN, you probably want to leave that on. Um, so I'll go ahead and disable it in my case. Disable location access override. That's fine with me. Disable phone calls on this device. I don't use it for phone calls. Disable push to install. This tweak prevents apps from being pushed to this device. I don't do any of that. Obviously, if you're in an enterprise environment, you might need that on. Disable screenshot border settings apps from turning off screenshot borders. I mean, that doesn't seem like a huge deal to me. I'll leave that one on. Uh, disable silent installed apps. Yeah, uh, I'm at home, so I don't really want anyone trying to install anything silently here. Again, if you're in an enterprise environment, um, you're managing a bunch of PCs on a domain or something, you probably want that on. Disable sync with up unpaired devices. Excuse me. Disable voice activation. I don't use that. Obviously, if you use something like that, you're going to want to leave it on. All right, so this is a lot of changes we made here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. Again, I took a snapshot. I would advise you to take a system restore if you're on a physical machine. I'm going to apply it. And I already took a snap, so I don't need this. I'm going to say no. This is just asking if you want to create a restore point. All settings have been applied. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot this and just make sure my machine didn't totally uh, get bricked. But this is a great way, guys, to really lighten up, kind of de your Windows 11 machine, at least from a settings perspective and a privacy perspective. Uh, we can do another video on actually de right, where we can rip things out. I did a video on how to modify your Windows 11 layout using custom third-party taskbar utilities where we can unlock that taskbar. We get rid of the widgets, and then we actually make the taskbar look more like Windows 10 and interact with it or i should say customize it so it functions similar to it to it to how it did excuse me i can't talk this morning in windows 10 
or even Windows 8. I mean, you have those options using that utility. If you haven't seen that video, um, I'll link it for you. It's pretty cool. All right, looks like we were still able to boot, so we didn't brick the machine. Yeah, and there we are, guys. We're still functioning, and we have our privacy. So I'm just going to open this up. And we can go in here if we wanted to, and we can change any of these settings back. So if we wanted to uncheck a bunch of these and then apply and reboot, we could do that as well. Now, one thing to note, I believe I did misinterpret. Um, I don't want that on, actually. Disable smart screen. Did I miss that? Maybe I blew right past that one, guys. Um, but you want you probably want smart screen filter on. This is more of like a uh, security feature. It's up to you, obviously, but I'll keep that on. Um, yeah, I misinterpreted the gray, though, where it talks about. Let's go back up to the top here. It's not going to show it now that I have something selected. There it is. So settings that have changed since the last time Do Not Spy 11 was used. I was thinking this was going to show me the things that I changed within Do Not Spy last time, but this is basically if you made changes outside of Do Not Spy. So just to clarify that one, guys. The gray would be if you made changes outside of this application since the last time you used it. It's not going to highlight what you have changed. Basically, that's what the checkboxes would do to show you what you have uh, enabled versus disabled. All right, guys. This is Do Not Spy 11. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you are concerned about your privacy and the things that Microsoft are forcing upon us. Uh, this is a good free application that you can use to get around a lot of that stuff. Let me know if you're using something else. Let me know if you're using this in combination with another application, maybe something to de-bloat Windows 11. Um, or let me know if you're, I don't want to say an extremist, but let me know if you're an extremist and you're running something like Tiny Tiny 11. And there's a bunch of other ones out there too. Um, yeah, let me know what you're doing, guys. Are you still on Windows 10 and you're hesitating to go to 11? If so, why? What's your strategy when the time comes and you have to either get off 10 uh, go to Linux, go to Windows 11, whatever that case may be. I'm always interested to hear about what the community is doing. Let me know, guys. Have a great day. Until the next video, take care.